This is John Mioli of the Baltimore Sun. I'm here with today's Ravens report where Coach John Harbaugh announced today that running back Lorenzo Taliaferro, the second-year man who's slated to have a huge role as the second running back behind Justin Forsett, is going to be out several weeks with a MCL sprain. Taliaferro tweeted that it was a minor setback in his major comeback. He obviously missed the last one. Anything lost can be found again except for time wasted. A vision without action is merely a dream. It's the action, it's the grind, it's the hustle, it's the persistence. In the car while roaming around, all my thoughts been roaming around. Where I come from, like a hole in the ground. Billy means still holding it down. Every car pass by with the music going loud while bumping, roaming around. Selling me to make a hit, but I really don't get why they walked on roaming around. With all my windows, I see everything I dream about and wish I had. Everything I dream about and wish I had You know, coming from Lackawanna, you know, it's it's a tough, tough place. Not just football, you know, it's it's like survival up there. You know, you got a bunch of kids who's hungry, who's who who were all promised to go to these big schools because you know everyone was great coming out of high school. We just lacked grades and you know discipline sometimes. So it, it was it was it was tough up there. But you know, I kept the mindset. Leaving high school, I didn't have the grades, so I told myself. You know, I'm going to make sure I get it done. I get, I'm going to get it done in the classroom and on the field. And that's what I did. I went up there, grinded for, for two years. And I, I went to every class. I didn't fail one class. I didn't drop one class. I ended up waiting for all these big schools. And uh, a lot of schools were telling me, oh, you know, we don't know if you're a fullback or you're a running back or they were waiting to see who signed with them, which high school was signed with them on signing day. And, uh, I had, and at this point, I took a visit to Texas Southern and Coastal, and I really liked both of them. I liked Coastal a lot. And it got closer to signing day, and I told myself, you know what, like, these schools don't, they don't really want me as bad as, bad as they say they do, because if, if they did, then there would be an offer on the table. They shouldn't have to wait. So I'm going to go somewhere that really wants me, and, you know, Talent, I always was told talent don't go unnoticed. So I was like, whether I go to small or big school, you know, I'm going to make it happen. And ended up going to Coastal. Uh, was behind three seniors my junior year, so I didn't, I didn't play that much. And then uh, senior year was just, was just very, very big for me. I mean, uh, I hold a lot of records there. And, you know, from from getting invited to the combine, from getting invited to the Senior Bowl to the combine, you know, I, I thought that was a big, a big step. I didn't even see that coming. I knew I played good enough, and I was good enough to get a to get an invite to some some NFL camp. But you know, if you would have told me I would have got drafted, I would be like, no, you know, I'm a small school guy. You know that I don't think I get drafted, and end up showing up at the Senior Bowl, had good times at the combine, and still. Um, I didn't think I was going to go fourth round. If anything, from putting up those numbers, I was like, okay, I might move from free agent to seventh round. And, you know, Ozzy and Coach Harves, they gave me that, that shot. And, you know, so my biggest thing is to, to not let them down, you know, not let my family down because, you know, this is a big opportunity. You know, not too many guys come from where I come from as far as schools to just make it. I mean, we got like six guys in the league, so... I'm just I'm just ready to build on that, you know, and one of my biggest biggest accomplishments so far was not simply getting drafted. The, the day I got drafted, uh, the same day I got drafted, I walked across the stage and received my degree, you know, and that was the biggest thing for me because, I mean, when you're young, you always tell yourself, I'm going to go to the NFL, I'm going to go to the NBA. Not too many people grow up saying, I'm going to get my degree. You know, athletes, not too many athletes say that the first thing. When you write on a piece of paper what you want to do in life, no one say, I want to get a degree. When you're an athlete, they say, I want to make it to whatever professional level they are playing. So, you know, 
I, I really felt felt really, 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 really good about myself from obtaining that degree. You know, it was a lot to take in that day. You know, uh, everyone at Coastal and Lackawanna, you know, they, they, they all support me. I got a strong support support base there. You know, uh, I, I'm still in contact with a lot of a lot of kids, coaches, teachers from Coastal and Lackawanna, you know, and I have a lot of respect and love for all of them. And, you know, and and a lot of people say a lot of people like to say all your old friends that you wasn't wasn't in contact with too much growing up. They're all gonna want something from you and make it to that level. But for me, man, it's been it's been none of that. It's been all love, open hands, you know, if anything, they've been asking for advice to what can I do to get here, what can I do? So you know it's it's all love. Coastal and Lackawanna got my heart forever. I simply say my biggest obstacle was just playing free, being confident in myself, you know. Rookie year, a lot was thrown on my plate, you know. Uh, making it to the league was just a, a big accomplishment, you know, and, and coming in and have to work so so much harder than I ever had and and to have so many, so much competition and, and stuff. So I, I would say just, just being free, just, you know, because everything, I would study, I would know all my stuff, but then as soon as I get out there, you know, it's just everything would just go blank sometimes. So I, I think just playing free, and I think I was able to come back. Um, going into this, this second year before I went down, I think I was able to come back and just do that. I, I was having a great camp, and, you know, unfortunately, the, one of the things that comes with the business is the, the injury bug. My biggest mo motivator is, is my mother. You know, I grew up in a house with three women. I'm the uh, middle of two girls. And my mom, you know, she, she did whatever she had to do to make sure we were, we were eating. We, we had clothes on our back. And, you know, it'd be, it'd be some times where if she didn't have it or she couldn't get it, she would want to ask some of my friends, parents, or whatever. And I, I would tell her no because I was embarrassed, but, you know, I, I had to realize, like, you know, I, there's no way I can be embarrassed for someone who's out there working and doing whatever it takes to to make sure we're eating. You know, if anyone should be, you know, feeling down, it should be her, not me, because she's doing what she got to do to make sure I eat. So outside of my, my mother, you know, uh, competition, you know, I'm motivated off competition and 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 I'm simply just I'm I'm self motivated. You know, it doesn't take me a lot to work hard. You know, I like to I like to see myself on top, to see myself grinding. I enjoy all that. So so when the benefits come, you know, I can say I actually worked hard for that. You know, I've been up here in uh, Maryland the whole off season since I had my surgery October fourteenth and. I mean, a week after surgery, I was lifting every day in the facility, upper body, you know, making sure I'm staying um, fit in the areas I can control. And now I've just been um, going through therapy with our trainers every day and just, you know, just building my strength up outside of the healing process. So now it's just building everything back up from where I left off. Well, I mean, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I say I eat a cheesesteak with with extra pickles and light mayo. <laughs> nah, uh, I, I got um, I got a close friend of mine. I end up linking up with uh, Jr. Chef Jr. Um, you know, he make I, at the facility. I eat my breakfast and lunch because I'm there for uh, I'm there from like 8 a.m. till 1 o'clock every day, and uh, Chef Jr. prepares my my dinners. They usually consist of high protein, your veggies, and a little bit of carbs. I'm trying to cut down on my carbs. And, you know, it, it'll be weeks where I'm high, really high on protein, and then it, it'll be weeks where I go back to my carbs. So, it, I mean, it's all been helping, you know. I, uh, I went into the season at about 220 with about 8% body fat. And uh, once I got hurt, you know, I couldn't do too much cardio and stuff. So I had went up to about two, 
228 with 12% body fat and with the help of JR eating right and our my trainers working me out good, getting me back, I, I've been able to maintain a 223, 224 with about 9% body fat. Uh, you know, I usually I usually never set too many goals outside of just go in there and do what you can do. Because, you know, a lot of people set goals. They, they put so much attention on one thing. And then the one thing that, that might not be on cameras or, or other people don't glorify, it goes, you know, it, it goes down. So, I mean, I never really set goals. But this year, I, I have started to set some goals. And, you know, I, I want to be that guy. I want to be the starting guy. I want to do everything I can to make my team win. I want to be be a pro bowler. I want to be a great teammate, you know, a leader amongst my team, all that. Well, I mean, besides the staying healthy part, you know, cuz I mean, that's a that's a big key. But you know, um most of my injuries if not a lot of everyone injuries are, you know, are uncontrollable. So outside of that, you know, I would say just getting back out there and showing them that I haven't lost a step and I've actually gotten better than where I left off. You know, uh, success to me is just someone or something that, that, that aims for or reaches whatever they aim for their whole life or whatever have been given to them, but not, not just settling, you know, just going uphill, not just being comfortable with where you're at, but just continuing to grow in all areas. You know, just, just, just hold on. The time, the time is coming, you know, uh, the best has yet to come in, in every area of life, not for me, just for you. So, you know, um, I'm ready, I'm excited. It's going to be a great season, so just stay tuned. And be ready. Believe that.